Wow, this is so cool. Got all kinds of colors on here. Tanner, tech, Tanner, tech, Tanner, Tanner, tech, Tanner, tech, Tanner. Hello, this is Tanner Tech. All right, today is another school project video where I will be making this LED web controlled. Don't worry though, I've got some normal videos coming out soon. I'm right now. I'm working on a video where I fix this old uh, digital multimeter with a really cool kind of neon display. So anyway, basically what's going on here is this is an RGB LED hooked up to an ESP32 uh, chip. And on my iPad here, I have a website called Lamp Control that I made. Basically, this lamp control has three sliders. And whenever you set these sliders to different values for R, G, and B, it will send a post request to a server running my Python code. When I send this can see that the LED turns on. Now basically what happened is it sent a post request to that server. That server stored that in a database. And then this ESP32 will occasionally, about every 200 milliseconds, query that server and ask what uh, RGB values are currently in the top of its database. It will return those three values and it will write that to the LED. So here, let's set this to no red, all green, and no blue. You can see that it turns all green. If I set it to all blue, there it is. And if I turn it all on, I made sure this is color balanced, so it would be a good, nice, color balanced white color. So there you go. Pretty cool. This is all red. Now the amazing thing about this is this will work on my iPad, it will work on my phone, it will work on my computer, it work on any computer in the world. So this is the ESP side code. It's going to start by initializing some things, getting connected to Wi-Fi. It's going to set the PWM channels to be going at 1000 Hz uh, at 8 bits of precision. Ignore this comment. And it's going to initially start them all at a duty cycle of 30%. After it initializes and connects to Wi-Fi, we're going to go into the void loop, where every 200 milliseconds, which is governed by this loop period, it's going to call the server. Calling the server involves calling uh, the class server with my Python file on it, which is going to return a dictionary containing a tuple containing the red, green, and blue color values that it needs to write. It's then going to convert those to integers. It's going to remap the green, because the green is typically far brighter than the other ones, and it's going to write the LED those three values. This is the Python code that lives on the class server. Over here we have the good HTML, and this is the Python code that dictates what that website is that we looked at, the website with the sliders for the different colors. This request handler function is what runs when you submit an HTTP request to this program. If that request happens to be a GET request, then a few things will happen. And if it happens to be a post request, then this will happen. Let's first assume that we have a get request. That get request is going to contain keys and values. We can see an example of this when I go to Google and search my own name. We can see that we are querying Google with a get request, and that get request contains the key Q and the value Tanner plus tech. The keys that need to be inputted to make this run our user and the values can either be Tanner or ESP, depending on whether I'm calling it to change the color values or whether the ESP32 is calling it to access information about what color to change its LED. If the user happens to be me, it's going to return the good HTML, this code that we have up here. If that user happens to be the ESP, it's going to access this database where the color values are stored. It's going to pull the red, green, and blue values out of that, and it's going to return these red, green, and blue values to the ESP32. If that request happens to be a post request, which happens when you press the submit button of the HTML file, then it's going to extract first the red, green, and blue values from the JSON file that was sent to it, and then it's going to 
write those values into a database. This database is what the program calls later when the ESP requests information. It's then going to return the good HTML code so you can enter another value into the device. Alright, thanks for watching and stay tuned for next time.